Okay. Alright, cast. Welcome to AP Comps IA. I'm Mr. Young. We'll show you on lesson three. I'm here with my uh, teacher's uh, teacher assistant. Uh, this is Adam. Say hi, Adam. Hi, everyone. Alright, cool. So, we're going to talk about lesson three. Lesson three is all about primitive types. What do you think primitive types will be, Adam? So, primitive types, what we're going to be doing is it's just learning how to initialize variables, how to work with strings, how to print stuff out. This is the core of what the class will be run on. Perfect. So yeah, so we're going to start with that. So let's start from the beginning. I know we're in lesson three, so we're still trying to get used to things. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new project. I already have a project called lesson three. But for people who don't remember, you're going to go to project, go to new project, you're going to type in lesson three here. Uh, you're going to make sure that the location is the correct place so you know where to find your project because in later in the later lessons you're going to need to know where your uh, where your projects go so now we're going to create a class so i'm going to create a new class lesson three i can't put a space no spaces on here you can do an underscore underscore works just as well but no spaces involved so i'm going to create lesson three and you're going to double click or you can go to open edit we're going to do double click here. Um, we're going to get rid of all that. And we're going to start from the beginning. So from the beginning, the first thing we're going to do, Adam, what is the first thing that we always should, uh, should start with? The first thing to always do is to create a class and make sure that you have an open and a closing curly that is, brace because that's very important. Yeah, that is a big thing. There was a lot of errors coming out because they didn't know what was wrong and because most people didn't close their brackets. So we're going to create a class here. Don't worry about this. You guys can copy this open class project. Okay. And then we're going to create a we're going to create our open and close brackets as you can see. And as you can notice that our class changes to whatever the name you wrote is. So, you can create whatever class you want, but once you identify what the class name is, the class will automatically transfer to that name. There we go. Um for the most part, uh, not all the time, but for at least the first couple of lessons, we are going to have to have a library. So we're going to talk about import GP draw. So I'm going to make sure we write that so we are de so we definitely remember to do that if we have a library. So this is a really good way to practice your coding and how to type and everything like that. So that's the first thing we're going to do. Now we're going to create our main method. We don't have a constructor because I'm just teaching you how to initialize things how to create a variable and everything like that. So we won't have a constructor for this because there's nothing to do. All the instructions are gonna be our main on our main method. So we're gonna create this static void main and then open and close parentheses. Inside of that will be string brackets args or arguments. And then we're going to open and close our brackets. Notice how when you open a bracket, you might as well put the close bracket and then put everything in between. This will help you create less errors. More, the more you don't remember how many brackets there are, the harder it gets to troubleshoot. And you're just going to have to start all over. And one thing to also help with that is if you format everything correctly by using tabbing, you're able to line up and see exactly where you start and close your brackets so everything will fit together. Right. Even if you don't, there is a there is something like that. So if you have this um, like that and anything like that, it won't do it won't do this. But if you have a bunch of things that are out um, not laid out properly, you can go to edit and go auto layout and it'll automatically put things where they're supposed to be, which is a nice tool here. All right, so let's get started on this. We're gonna start with the first thing that most people learn about in primitive types. We're gonna talk about our identifiers. We have three, there are six identifiers that we um, in programming know. But in AP ComSci for the test, we're only looking at the three identifiers. There's only three identifiers in there. There are three identifiers that you must know and must really be familiar with. The first one's gonna be int, second one's gonna be double, and the third one's gonna be boolean. Okay. Int is already pretty straightforward. We have int, um, int x equals five. 
it is basically just an integer. It is not initialized. I used to think that in high school, I thought it was initialized x. It's not, it is integer x. So you're creating a variable called x that has an integer value. Okay, so whole numbers. So far so good. The next one is double. And a double, I'm gonna do y is equal to, and a double is in this case decimals. So we can have it as 2.56. And this is going to be decimals. If you want it to print out decimals, this is the way to print it out. Now, we're gonna test this out and we're gonna create an integer and see what happens to 2.56. So the next thing we're gonna learn here is, as you can see, 2.56 is incompatible types, conversion for double to int. So it does not. So you can. Right. So you can think about it as, a, you know, a square is a rectangle, but a rectangle is not a square. So an integer can be a double, but a double cannot be put as an integer. And there you go. So basically, if you have decimals, you have to use the double. Um, if you don't use the double, it's not going to be able to recognize it, okay? And the last one we're going to talk about is Boolean. Boolean is basically, and this one goes Z. Boolean is basically true or false. You have a true or false statement. Literally, that's what it is. You are just identifying it's either true or false. And sometimes we will talk, we'll do that to compare two things. If something is equal to something else or less than something else or greater than something else we'll use the boolean to see if it's true or not so that way if it's true you do something if it's false you'll do something else so it has a lot to do a lot of times it usually goes with our conditional statements so far so good cool so let's go through how do we print this how are we going to print this out so that way a bunch of things are going to show up well, this is the most important thing. We're going to do system.out.print. Okay? There are two types of system outs. There are system.out.print and there's system.out.println. Now, we can kind of know what ln stands for. Most of these things are acronyms for something. What do you think, well, Adam, what does LN stand for? So LN stands for line. So it would print a line after, keyword is after the statement is already printed out. Okay, so LN means new line after the print. So this one, what's going to happen is we're going to say X here, we're going to um, c dot out dot print x and then we're going to c dot out dot print y and then we're going to do one more system dot out dot print ln i like to use ln because it makes things nice and easy and z all right so let's try this let's see what it let's see what it shows us here okay we're going to compile you can compile here or you can compile here and then you're going to process the void main and as you can see we have 5 2.56 and true notice how it doesn't give out a space so the 5 and the 2.5 uh, 2.56 are connected together and then after the, after the y there's a new line because of this and it prints out true you know that the boolean z is true so far so good cool the next one we're going to talk about here is char. Char means character. So it will print out a character for you. Everything. We're going to do the next one. We're going to say char l equals e. Okay. So it's going to print out the letter e. So this is how we initialize char. Did I? Oh, yep. There we go. Don't forget the semicolons. That's one of the one of the most common errors out there. There's a semicolon missing or there's an extra semicolon somewhere where you're not supposed to. 
So char is just basically you want to print, you want to store an actual letter. In this case, you can't really store a letter here because if I do that, I think it gives me an error. Nope, it doesn't. So somehow you can store that as well. But so you'll learn later on why you can do that. It's something called an ASCII value. Mm -hmm. um, but we will be using that later on in labs in the year. Right. So that's why an int can be st a letter can be stored as an int because every letter we talk about, so A, B, C, D, all your alphabets is stored in the computer as a numerical value, which we will talk about right now in a bit. So we're going to talk about our characters, the so system dot out dot print ln because I like it it's nice and easy we're gonna create L and then I'm actually going to we'll do this in a bit so now we're gonna compile uh, your argument as you can see an E comes out now there are two ways to change this we can either put an int up here or we can put an int down here so what we're doing right now is we're doing something called casting so casting is when you change the identifier of one variable to be another variable so it will print out something different so if we're taking the integer value of a letter it's not going to give us e anymore but it's going to give us that ascii value of e all right let's try that out let's check that out we're going to compile we're going to run it as you can see uh, the ASCII code for the letter E is 69. I'm going to shape the form. So you can put the int here, or you can put it up here, and it'll still do the same thing. So we can do this, and then create int here. And then we can compile and run it. Oh, that didn't work. Well, why didn't this work? Oh. The reason why this did not work is because you're still setting it equal to a char value, and a char can only take one character no matter what it is. So if you had it sent to an integer, then you would be able to get the number. But since it is set as a char, it can only take one value of any type. It could only take one number, one letter. It could even take like one semicolon. It can only take one value. Right. So he's talking about it. what happens if I put an integer here? Well, let's see if we can do that. That's probably going to help make it work. Okay. So what happens if we put the letter E in an integer X? Take a look. Run this. As you can see, the ASCII code 69 goes into the first one X. So int X means integer X equals the ASCII code of E, which is E for as in ASCII code is 69. So 69 goes into X. So as you can see, there are different ways to create a variable or create a number or cast a cast a different type. So we're going to put this back, E over here. So now we have four C outs in some way, shape, or form, which is great. Um so now we're gonna talk about What's our next thing we're going to talk about? We're going to talk about little things that we can do with um, system dot out. We have only been printing out what we've initialized: our our x, our y, our z, and our l. But what happens if you want to write stuff down? Uh, writing stuff down requires us to use a particular symbol, and in this case, it is a quote. Notice how when I put when I don't put quotes on here, it's going to give me an error. So we're going to write this is a test and only a test. Okay. So what's going to happen here? It's going to create an error because it does not recognize any of this. It does not recognize this is a and test and only. So it doesn't recognize those words because it's not a reserved word. So we want to make sure that you guys know what this uh, what it is. Reserved words. Reserved words are only words that Java identifies and can recognize. Only Java knows. Okay? 
So because of that, these words right here, Java does not recognize. So it's going to give you an error. So now how do we print this? We're going to print this as a quote. Type in a quote here. As you can see, the quote turns green. The green means that it's going to print this verbatim. It's going to print that, that sentence out exactly how you typed it. Then we're going to test file. We're going to run it. As you can see, this is a test and only a test. Any questions on that? Should be pretty straightforward. Now we're going to look at different symbols. I want this. This is A on the first line and I want test and only test on a second line. So instead of doing two C outs, I can actually put a different symbol in here. I can put in forward slash N. Forward slash N, if you read through the lesson and you have to read through the lesson because there probably might be a quiz on this, forward slash N gives us a new line. If I'm going to compile this and then run main, as you can see, it truncates. This is A. And then out forward slash N makes it a new line and then test and only test. There's also other ones if you read through it. The other one is if you do um, backslash backslash and run through that, you get a backslash symbol. So there are different ways to make a symbol. You can also do, I believe it's backslash backslash quote. Nope. What is it? Let's take a look. I don't know all the symbols, so I'm going to go through. There's just line. backslash quote is one. It's backslash quote, see? So even I don't know all the symbols yet. So as you can see, it stays green. So this will print out the quotation marks if you want quotation on it. You can see the quotations come up and so forth. So we basically, this is how you're going to write things word for word and anything. Now we're going to test out operators. Now, how do operators work on here, Adam? So operators on here, it's going to be very similar to what you would do in real life. But just the one key thing is that you always want to set the side that it's equal to to be on the left. That is the biggest thing because the computer can only read the answers if they're on the left side. Right. So we're going to start with a new, we're going to initialize another another variable we're going to initialize a um, when you're writing these labs you are not writing you're not going to write you're not going to initialize x y and z no you're going to initialize other things so instead of at, instead of a i'm going to go initialize at you can put words on here um, so we're going to initialize add so we're going to do three plus five so basically the variable add is going to have the answer of eight because it's three plus five. So then we're gonna do that. We're also gonna try and do a double. We want a decimal, so we're gonna try and do a double and we're gonna do 15 divided by two. I messed up here. What did I do wrong here, Adam? Well, the one thing, you always need to have a variable. Yes, double is a reserved word, but you need to create an instance of that reserved word, which in this case would be a variable that you could call divide. So now we have the word divide. I can spell it correctly. Divide 15 divided by two. We're assuming that this is gonna give me 7.5. Well, let's figure it out. And again, practice typing everything out first. I know copy and paste is a beautiful thing, but you need to remember how to write these programs properly before you can do it because on the AP exam, you might be writing on a piece of paper. We don't know that yet. So I'm going to type in at, um, system .print, system .out .print ln add, and we're going to do system.out.print ln, and we're going to do divide. So let's take a look at what this is. Still no errors, which is good. We're gonna run the program. And as you can see, we have eight, seven. Now I did something wrong. Why is the eight here? It's because we do not have a new line here. So I'm gonna change this to LN. 
So now we have all this stuff. Now, why in the world am I getting 7 and not 7.5? The problem. Now, what do I have to do? And there's, there are two reasons why. Adam, you want to explain the two reasons? Sure. So the first thing, you remember how we said that an integer can be a double? Well, it can, but there's one catch to that. Whenever you have an integer and you do it in any type of equation that is stored as a double, it's always going to round down to the lowest whole number, but it will include a point zero at the end. Let's say you just put 15 by itself, it would have 15.0. So an integer, no matter what, will show up as a decimal point when used with a double, but it might not always be the correct number. Do you want to explain the second reason, Mr. Yeah, Young? so the second reason is the fact that these numbers are considered integers right now because there is no, because it is not a decimal. Yes, we're creating this double, divide as a double. Yes, the divide is a double, but unfortunately 15 and 2 are not doubles. So there are two ways you can definitely put this together. You can either cat, you can either put double in here, which creates the divide as a double, or you can put point zero and point two. Those two ways this create this makes the computer recognize that fifteen is a double, two is a double, which means that when you divide it you're gonna keep all the decimals and store it in divide, okay? Now, keyword is on the AP test, we need to make sure that you are using the equal sign correctly. The equal sign does not mean that they are equal to each other. The left side does not equal the right side. Keyword is that this operation or whatever this answer is, gets assigned to divide. So 5 is assigned to x. x is not equal to 5. 5 is just assigned to x, which makes 5 x 5. Okay, It's an assignment. It is not an equal. These, these two, the left and the right side, are not equal to each other in programming. They are assignments. You are assigning certain things to certain variables. So you have to remember that. So let's take a look. Let's go back to our divide. Hopefully this gives us 7.5. We're going to run compile. We're going to run the program. And yes, it does. It gives us 7.5. Fairly simple, fairly easy. Now we're going to talk about little things. You can combine, yes, you can combine words, coded words, and variables into a single, to a single, um, System dot out. So we're gonna create a system dot out dot print ln. We're gonna create this. We're gonna say um, the value of x and then we're gonna put x. Now I got an error. Why do I have an error? We're missing something. We're missing one very important thing. What would that be? So like we were talking about before with the equal signs, it doesn't mean that it equals, but it's assigning a value. So whenever we use system.out.print and we're trying to combine multiple variables or when we're combining text and variables, you always need to put a plus sign in between the quotation mark and the variable. Right. That does not mean that you're adding the two together per se, but it's just combining them. Right, so it's just saying, okay, take the words that I'm writing and add the, ver add the value of A to the back of it. So now we're gonna write this up. We're gonna compile our print screen. And as you can see, the value of X is five, okay? And as you can see, we can continue this by adding plus, and then we'll do double quote, which means that you're just, this plus sign means that you're just adding more to the system dot out. The value of y plus y. We're gonna compile, we're gonna run the program, and as you can see, 
the value of x by the value of y, 0.5. Now, obviously, there's no space here, so I would put space here. And or you can just create a space by using double quotes and uh, empty space. So let's compile, let's run. As you can see, now I have the space on here. This, this lesson should help you with Easter and coins. My suggestion is to do Easter first, because Easter is just all about operations. So it's basically doing everything down here properly. You just have to do formatting. You have to do uh, format it correctly. And then coin is a little bit more complex, but you're basically essentially doing the same thing. You're, you're creating identifiers to grab an instance variable, and that instance variable is going to be assigned a value in any way, shape, or form. I think that's pretty much what lesson three is. What do you think, Adam? Yes, just the one thing, whenever you're creating a variable, like Mr. Young said, you can name it anything before, like you can name it anything you want. You just cannot have two of the same variables if you initialize it twice. Like you cannot do int x equals five and then int x equals three. On the second one, you could just put x equals three. It still works because it's just an assignment. And then also, whenever you have two words, for a variable, what you do is you make sure the in, the first word, let's say it's grade, you keep that lowercase, and then you do the capital B in book. So you would have grade and then book, and the only thing capitalized is B to know that there's two different words. Yeah, let's talk about that. So when we're talking about variables and identifiers, um, when we talk about variables, we wanna make sure that your variable starts with a letter like Adam said second thing would be to make sure that there are no spaces third thing is um, cannot be reserved words because then it won't recognize the stuff and then what he was talking about is um, for an actual variable or any type of variable you're writing Everything is lowercase if it's one word. So like grade, okay? Grade is all lowercase. If you have a second word on it, like grade book, you want to make sure that the second word is capitalized. And then the third and then the last thing is if you have constants, if you have constants, make sure they are capitalized, like pi and gravity. Any constants should be all capital capital uh capital because that way you can identify what's a constant and what's not am i missing anything else i think that's it all right so just make sure these simple rules we're going to look at your labs particularly because now you're starting into your programming stuff do not use the same thing as y x y and z i want you to use something meaningful like add or divide or uh, whatever they say on there like coins you're going to use quarters dimes and nickels as your variables instead of n q and d and this also comes in very handy because as we had you with the house you had to comment your code so we know what every single part of the code does exactly. but now if we have variables named for what you're doing you don't really need to comment it as much because you're able to see the progression exactly Great, so th that's pretty much what lesson three is about. Hopefully you guys will have a great time coding, experimenting. Remember, AP Computer Science is all about experimenting and learning from your experiences, all right? Well, thank you for listening to this lesson. Good luck on your labs, and we will see you next time. Have a good one, guys. See ya. Bye, everyone.